November 1989, in Germany, a war falls. One year later, I was born far, far away in Kyrgyzstan. My, shortly after, my family decided to go back, back to their homeland, back to the families, back to the future, back to Germany. It was a challenge. We had absolutely nothing. How I become a double Olympic world champion, a double Olympic champion, a seven-time world champion, and how I challenged the most hardest day in my life, because I had two phases of blows, that's what I want to tell you about today. When you come back to Germany as a so-called displaced, displaced people, you starting from the scratch. We had nothing. We left everything behind and we started to build up a new life. As a so-called displaced person, which means that my family was just putting on a train and drive it back to, right to Kyrgyzstan, and we had to go the first, first years of my life and then as a seeker home since t until our papers were cleared. That means that I spent the first two years of my life between higher beds, common showers, but all other asylum seekers. After that, of course, it was important for my family to integrate as fast as possible to uh, find work, immediately find work. Work will grant you a better life. You will have it one day better. That's what my mama told to me always, and I believed to her. Then we settled down in a quiet little town called called Zamada. I had a beautiful childhood. I found friends, but one thing always set me apart from my friends. While they enjoy their free time of the school, of the kindergarten, I have to make always myself useful at home. So cooking for my sisters, helping the house, helping in the garden, and I realized that I wanted to do more with my future, that I wanted to create an a happiness, a happiness life. So then I started with sport, but I started with dancing and with cycling. Of course, all the training sessions have to come, to come together and I always have to decide, go to dancing or go to cycling. And I couldn't make the decision. So I was standing in my childhood bedroom and yes, I just tossed a coin. Coins don't hesitate. Head, dancing, tolls, cycling. So the decision was clear. Sometimes it's crazy that fate makes choices for us. And I didn't, I, I respect, the, I respect the, yeah, the coin because I always do things because I loved it. And I never asked myself, I am have enough athletic proofers, or I am not qualified to do this to the sport. I just did it because I love. Then I started this great cycling career. 2000, I was standing in my childhood bedroom, tossing the coin. Eight years later, I was a six-time junior world champion. In 2009, I leveled up from the juniors to the adult rankings, and of course, I want to compete again more on these um, way to success and way to, way to more gold medals, because nothing is more motivating than winning gold. I think you can understand that, right? But then life interrupted my plans. There was the 20th May of 2009, a wonderful spring day. I say goodbye to my other training partners. I go out of the saddle, and then it turns black. I woke up, and I have to orientate myself why I am, and hardly I couldn't speak, and saw my boyfriend at my bedside, and I tried to communicate that I have some questions, and please give me a, a paper and, uh, and the pen. And hardly I wrote down my two questions. Question number one, in which hospital I am? I don't know why, but somehow it was important for me. Question number two, can I get a new bike? 
Of course, I had all these questions. So on the 20th of May, I broke more than 10 bones in my body. My lung interrupt. I almost died. I was two days in a lucid coma. And the first thing was to ask about a new bike. How crazy is that? But I thought about this beautiful bike, which my mother and my father paid with their hard-earned money. You remember I doing things because I love, and maybe this in innocent, endurant love to something is one of the uh, yeah, reason, the path of my success. I ask about a new bike, wanted to have a new cycling career, and of course, I asked these questions, sitting in the hospital, having pain. I asked my mama, Mama, why does it happen to me? Why a car hit me? Why a car hit the front of me? And why I crashed into the side of a minibus? My mama told me that God burns us such, so, many, so many topics, so many exercises, which he belongs that we can manage that. He proved us if we are ready to fight for what we want. I don't know if it's true or not, but I believe that. And I believe that when I'm working hard on something, hard work will pay off. And crazy it sounds, since that, I was not stoppable. 2009, my first accident. Then I run fast through every world championships in 2018, I was a double Olympic champion, seven-time world champion, seven-time world champion, and I had the title of uh, the best track cycling athlete in the world. Someone told me there's a Christina Vogel speed that I'm just living on, living on the edge, you now living on the high speed way, on the motorway. I am. Um, Riding so fast that I almost lost my saddle. Maybe some of you have seen my Olympic gold ride at Rio de Janeiro. Yes, I lost my saddle on the finish line. And trust me, cycling with a saddle makes much more fun. Trust me. So I am here holding the title of the best track cycling athlete in the world. I should be yelling and yelling all the time because I should be so proud, but I, I wasn't. Normally, I should ride over the, over the finish line, and the first thing, the first I had, had in my mind was, yay, I won, but rather it was, yay, I proved myself again. It was that I had to prove the world that I win all these medals because I'm really the best athlete in the world, that I'm not these one day, one day, um, one day thing. How crazy is that, right? But when you are an Olympic champion 2012, Olympic champion 2016, it's crystal clear what my plans have been for the Olympic Games in Tokyo. But then, life again interrupt. It was the 26th of June in 2018. It was the last run of a training session. I early before, before us, accelerate us. I was in sitting in a slipstream. She went out of the line. I accelerated more to have a really, really good time at the finish line. And then it turned black again. I was walking up, lying on a track, and the first thing I thought, Christina, as long as you're consistent, focus and breathe, breathe, breathe. And the next time I saw the helpers running and how they running to me, um, it was like, yeah, my intentions are right. From, from this to that, I had so much pressure in my, in my body and I somehow I have to, have to free myself. And what recyclists are always doing is weighing off our shoes and the helm. The shoes are really angry, really fitted because um, all these powers, I was riding over 1,700 1, watts on the pedal. And all these watts have to cover to the speed. That's why the shoes have really, really fit, fit. And I had to explain to the, how to open my, 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 my shoes. And I explained to the closest system. And 
I was still explaining them how to open my shoes, and I saw the shoes was running away from my body. There was holding from the helpers, and there was a running away from my body, and I thought, hey, I didn't finish my explanation, and I didn't feel that someone was on my feet. I paused, and I realized this walking thing will have an end. I will never, ever walk again. Hardly they managed to keep me alive and fly me from Cottbus to Berlin Hospital. I had an eight hours emergency operation and I was two days in the coma. After I woke up, of course, I had this question. Can I still walk or not? Was my intuition right or, or false? At my bedside stand the chief doctor and my boyfriend. Hardly I couldn't speak, and I managed my question with the body language and gesticle. Can I walk or not? The doctors told me that I will never ever walk again. But the high of my paralysis prognosis a good, a good life, because if I work hard one day, I could live independently. But I have to come back to the term that I he used to be in the hospital for minimum six to, 12, six to 12 months. I paused. Tears was running through my cheek. And then I told to my family, don't worry, I will make that. I will leave the hospital after six months. To be honest, the first weeks wasn't easy after that statement. I fight for my life. Within three weeks, I had three emergency, emergency operations and another instant coma because I get a pneumonia. It was 50 to 50. Do I survive or not? The worst thing I heard all day was, Christina, be patient. I have many qualifications, but patience is not one of them. Hardly I started to yeah, find something with me. What's that with me and this wheelchair? And literally, I have to start with the exercise sitting in a wheelchair. Yes, it was a hard feat for me just to sit in my wheelchair. Just two, two months before, I was doing squat with 170 kilograms on a barbell. And now I was sitting there with mini weights, hardly sitting in a wheelchair. But then somehow, I thought, I'm living life. I love laughing, and why should I stop now? I realized that all of us, we are role models. We can decide if we are a good one or a bad one. And I always remember one, one moment when I was sitting the first time in a restaurant with my, with my boyfriend and my sister, and the woman came to me. She told me that she had the second time breast cancer. And you know she can manage this challenge because I ma manage my challenge too. For some reason, I realized that I can motivate people and they're trying to keep my pay somehow. And I always had this question in my mind, who I am now? It was hard. It was really hard. So having these winning four gold medals and now sitting in my chair and don't know what with my life going on. And my field therapist, Kishi, knows from the beginning that I'm not the normal patient. And he told me about the master challenge, which means it is a floor to wheelchair transfer. It means if I fall out of my wheelchair, I could, yeah, come back impenitently without any help, without my legs, back in my chair. Of course, you're thinking that I do it from one to another day. Think again, it was tough. I make one day a big step, another day two steps behind. It was frustrating. For, some, for a girl who put shame on many athletes, female athletes and men athletes in the gym with my squats, fighting then for exercises from just a little inches, it was tough. On some reason, these floor to reach a transfer was a symbol of my independence in my life. Just a week 
before I leave the hospital, I managed my master challenge. Of course, may have maybe some of you thinking that life handled me with a rough hand because I managed just two falls of play, two accidents. But I always thinking, I was believing that the quality of our life depends on what we are asking ourselves. So, and I realized that I learned from the first accident. Of course, at the first accident, I asked myself why I am, why this car hit me. And I learned that there is no good answer. Trying to keep the answer of that questions stop us for our moving forward. And at my second accident, if I would ask that, I definitely would fall in a deep depression. So I didn't. I asked myself, how can I manage these floor to reacher transfer? But who I am now without winning gold medals? Who I am? Olympic champion which put a piece of life together. TV shows came to me and asked me if I can tell my story. People asked me to write the book, so yeah, I said, okay, writing a book, why not? Life gives us chances and it depends on us. Take the chance, make the best of it, of it, or take the next one. But who I am now? I'm still Christina, a former track cyclist, but I'm now an author, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a coach, I'm kind of an influencer, social media thing, so I motivate people. And after four years, I finally found myself again. Of course, sometimes days are still hard, you know? Um, I always find some burns outside stairs, parking spots for disabled people where other people parking there, you know? But I'm literally happy every day. And after all these master changes in my life, I will give you one thing for you, that at the end, it depends what we make out of it. So life is what you make out of it. Thank you. Thank you.